Welcome to Golf Stream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Katie Stazak and a very happy Father's Day to all your dads out there. I'm sure Katie will be thanking her dad in just a few minutes. But we'll first want to tell you about the thing that can make your dad really happy, and that's the Rainbow Six carryover, which starts in race number four today. If you can nail this, $254,000 plus, it's going to skyrocket right up today. Might be near the $300,000 mark. It's a 20-cent wager, and that starts in race number four, two, nine. Uh, we have a fast main track, firm turf course this afternoon. Katie, now's your chance to tell your dad a happy Father's Day. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> first, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you very and, much. Uh, <laughs> Happy Father's Day to my dad out there. Dad, I am going to try to bring you home a nice check from the Rainbow Six and help you buy that house you want in the Keys. See that? So, hope you have a great day. And hopefully, we can get all the dads out there a few winners today. Yeah, we, get, we hope we can. And once again, Happy Father's Day. And don't forget, today is the first day of summer. It's been 300 degrees the last couple of days, but today is officially the first <laughs> day of summer. So let's delve right into the Father's Day card and this one at uh, first race. Well, before we do that, let's take a rewind to yesterday, which I thought was a great race. This one was so exciting at the finish. The horse that ends up winning, you don't think he's going to win until the final jump. Yeah, what an exciting finish this was yesterday in the King Who Got Handicap, our co-feature of the afternoon. Take a look at my point exactly from the Bill Kaplan barn. This is been a talented horse, already a stakes winner on grass, but has been switching surfaces around. Got back on the turf last time out, returns to Gulfstream and gets another win. Just getting up in between horses at the wire. An exciting finish in this race. And I also want to say, what a run from Black Martino in great, second. Right, yeah, he really ran fantastic. And I thought he was going to win. That's why I was saying that. He split horses. It was a great ride there. And uh, uh, Bill Kaplan does an excellent job. And this horse has shown a definite affinity for the turf. Went back to the turf and, uh, and responded with the victory. So uh, a very nice uh, co-feature event yesterday afternoon. Now we'll get to the Sunday action. The first race. One mile and one sixteenth on the turf. Claimants, Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of three races in life. $12,500. We're going to have an eight runners going to the post this afternoon. And we're sort of in agreement here. Katie went with the number four, Athenian Beauty, on top of the ticket. We have our same three horses just mixed around a little bit, and I could see any of the three winning. I gave the edge to Athenian Beauty. This one was able to make up some ground from the back of the pack last time out to get up for third. That was at this level and distance, and that came after a pretty significant class drop from the $25,000 level. The move definitely seemed to agree with her, and I think she just finds herself in a good spot today. I just took a look at that drop. She's competed against tougher, so that's why I gave her the edge. Well, I'm surprised I don't have it on top because that race last time I was a key race. A couple of horses in that race came out to win their next starts. That's the bandwagon. I usually jump on, but I put the horse in third. I did go with the horse that Katie has in second. Acquisition, this one is dropping to the $12,500 level. After rallying to get three, uh, beat three lengths against Tougher going a mile, I think the stretch out to a mile in the 16th should help this daughter of Rock Hard 10. Absolutely. Last time out, she was looking for that extra ground that she's going to get today and that could definitely help her move forward. Well, another horse we both used was the number seven, Summer Valentine. Well, she shocked the field last time <laughs> out at odds of about 100 to 1 for trainer Ron Gaffney. That was at this level and distance. Octavio Vergara Jr. is going to stay aboard. And she has the lone speed in here, so she could try to steal it yet again. Yeah, and I, I mean, uh, I did not have it last time. I wish I did, <laughs> but I uh, did not have it. And it, you're absolutely right. This horse figures in there. It's not going to be bad as much because when they look and see, you know, it was 100 to 1, they don't believe that a horse like this can put two in row together, but if you get a tactical advantage, maybe you can. So we're basically in agreement in race number one. We're going to go to race number two now. Six furlongs claim is Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of two races in life or three-year-olds. We do have a jockey change in here on the number three. Make the rider Jose Carabao, 118 pounds, and want to let you know that Tyler Gaffley the Apprentice will not be riding this afternoon. So we have some of the jockey changes, but the ones that are missing before we came on the air are, are trucking out of Pete Aiello, We'll uh, update you on all the jockey changes this afternoon. Tyler, not riding Sunday afternoon. Uh, this race here, we both started, Katie, with the number three, Starship Cosmo. 
And this is a move that we don't always usually go with in terms of putting a horse on top that's going to be facing winners for the first time. But this one, I think she's well spotted to do so today. Held on for a neck victory to defeat $10,000 maiden claimers on June 11th. Set the pace and was able to hold on going seven furlongs. So six furlongs today should be right up her alley. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you on that one. Yeah, Mike Petro, he's about 17% winning back-to-back -back races. I threw to five in a second, and then Zamatara. And this one is a well-meant second at this level and distance. Was back on May 10th, stretched it out after breaking slowly. Really failed to get on track in that race. It was a $6,250 condition claimer going five and a half furlongs. I think the stretch out and I'm going to forgive that last performance. Look at the one back on May 10th and use this one on my ticket. We both used the four, so it's true. This one from the Kathy Ritvo Barn is the only two-time winner in the field, so that might be the key to this race right there. Scored a professional three-and-a-half length victory, two starts back, but again, disappointed last time out, so I think there's another one that you might need to forgive the last race. Yeah, and this one actually finished six behind the five horse last time out, Zamorada, so we'll see how that works through, but I'm in agreement. You know, it's one of those uh, ran good, bounce back, maybe could come back, not a tough spot. Looks like the number three starts of Cosmo might be the right horse in here, even though stepping up to face winners for the first time. That one, six furlongs, as we mentioned. Uh, let's go to our third race of the afternoon, and uh, this race is a one-mile claimer, three-year-olds and up, non-winners of three races in life, or a race in six months. The claiming level, 30000 down to $25,000. Scratch the one, Golden Jason. The jockey on the floor is Jose Caraballo. The weight is 121 pounds. And uh, we both went, oh, wait, um, yeah, race three. Oh, they got the wrong selection. I thought they forgot the fifth place. We both have the number six in here, and it's Toe's Great Cat. I'm pretty sure of that. Yes, we do. Yeah, That's yeah. Toe's Great Cat, and this one for I the... I panicked there for a second. I looked <laughs> up and saw we had the three. No, we both have the six, and he's a very worthy selection today. This horse so consistent, 10 for 14 in the money at Gulfstream. Finished first or second in each of his last four starts. He's going to drop out of starter allowance company today and just seems to be in the ideal spot today. Yeah, I think he's the one to absolutely to beat in there. And if you started the uh, pick four in race number two, this is a horse where you might be able to single. I think he's got a pretty good shot to win that one. We both use the number four, Argosy, in second, stepping up for the competition. First start since rallying from way back, about 14 lengths off the pace to defeat. $30,000 condition claim is at the distance, was back on on December 19th, but I like the way the horse has been working uh, strongly for the return. It's a six-month layoff, but I thought this horse is working pretty well. And the Ralph Nix barn does well with these types of horses, and plus this horse is proven fresh. He's run well off of a layoff before. Would not be surprised to see him get the win here today at all. Well, I did have the number one Golden Jason on my ticket, so I added the number two uh, General Shaman. Did you add a horse in here, or did you, that was your selection? I kept Cool Union Man on here from the start. A little bit of a question mark there and a red flag because he's competed against lots tougher, and this is going to be a big step down from him. But just three starts back, he finished third behind Fastidious Sun and Rizwan. Rizwan didn't run all that great yesterday, but that was just because of post position. It's a so. very nice horse. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I added the number two General Shama. was wheeling back with seven days, you know, stretching out to a mile. was five wide last time out. The barn, Dan Peter, has a positive return of investment with horses stretching out in distance, $2.65 or something like that. But uh, I added that one afterwards, so I might go back and look at that. But I'm pretty sure that Toe's Great Cat, the number six, is the right horse there. I completely agree, and I think the top two would be pretty safe if you were looking at you know, how deep you're going to go in a pick four. Well, let's go to the fourth race this afternoon. This is where the Rainbow Six starts, as we mentioned, $254,000 plus about two fifty-five already in the pool. And this one is seven and a half furlongs on the turf, made in special weight, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Uh, we got a couple of jockey changes on the two, make the rider Miguel Vasquez. And on the five horse, make the rider Edgar Zayas. The weight will be 118 pounds. We want to go back and show you performance of a horse that you have on top, and I have in third, and that is number three, Happily Ever. Happily Ever ran very well last time out. This horse dropped back very far early. You're going to take a look. It's the six in this race. A little bit covered up there uh, as far as the number, but you mm. see, watch her drop back all the way to the back of the pack early. It looks like she's just falling out of the race, maybe just didn't get her footing, but she's going to rally. See her come on wide and actually going to close very well and get up for third in this race. 
only beaten three quarters of a length. That's hard to believe because she just re-entered your picture right mm -hmm. there. Now she's out of the picture again. She's still going to come on well beaten, but is going to get up for a piece of this. And I think the key is that she's going to have blinkers on today, and that's going to help her be more involved in this race early. And that was our first start in eight months, so also making a second start back off a layoff. Yeah, and she also looked like she was looking around a little bit in the stretch, so I think the blinkers are going to help. I have it on my ticket for exact reasons, but I did go with the number five, Courtly Lock, who this was a half sister to a horse we really like. Grade two stakes plays daring Kathy. He's turning back just a bit to seven and a half furlongs after tracking the pace and finishing second as the favorite, going a mile, and that was against a state bred maiden special weight competition. This is a daughter of a Shakespeare, and I believe she's the one ready to shed the maiden tag today. She's bred to go this distance on the turf course, owns the highest last out buyer of the field, and is absolutely due for a win, Ron. Well, we both have basically the same three up there. I used the number six in second. You had it in third, and that's pretty and sweet. There's a late running type who showed promise in both career turf starts, which includes that $50,000 career debut at seven and a half for furlongs. This distance today, Juan Rodriguez, Eddie Castro. It's a daughter of looking at Lucky. It's another that has proven consistency and is due to breakthrough. Yeah, I, I just think we got the, the right three there uh, for the start of the Rainbow Six. But if you have a different angle, uh, you might want to use it because you don't want to get knocked out in the first leg. But if you should, we have to pick five in the next race today, and that is a race number five. It's a six furlong maiden claiming event, three-year-olds and up $10,000. Uh, this one, we have a couple of jockey changes in here, three actually. Well, one we don't have to change yet. It'll be on the number five to be announced. The seven will be Octavio Vergara Jr., and the number eight will be Shannon Yuski. And I went with the number three horse in here, Forest Warrior. And Forest Warrior is stretching out uh, an additional half furlong after a pair of second place finishes against similar going five and a half furlongs it's a son of Reddy's image Jonathan Gonzalez in the saddle and I just thought Forest Warrior was the way, way to go and you have the same horse up there I do have the same horse up there there's not a whole lot of speed among this group and I think this horse could have things his own way I think he's a logical choice up there. I put the two and second hand picks. You also have him on the ticket. This one's from the Stanley Gold Barn. Going to return to the main track today after finishing a distant eighth in a turf sprint on May 25th. But two starts back, he went seven furlongs on the dirt, took the lead, and just got caught. That suggests that he's going to be well set up for this six furlong distance today. And really, he has run his best races at this distance, three for four in the money at six furlongs. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that horse, too. And the other horse that we used was number four, Mi Patron. This is uh, a speedy daughter of Flashy Bull who's going to be running and gunning, I'm sure, as soon as they spring the gate latch. The problem has been its tendency to weaken late, but I'll tell you what, he's going to be on the engine taking him as far as he can, I believe at least. And, you know, you never know with the track condition the way it is, uh, you know, fast track, may be able to steal this one on the front end. The track bias, if there is one, could definitely help it. The Gulfstream track does suit front runners, but the issue with this horse is that regardless of the distance, <laughs> he's faded going five and a half for and going a mile. It's just, does he want to stay? We'll see. Well, that's the key. But you never know. One of those days, I'm always interested to see uh, in a particular day to say, hey, I'm not going to stop today. I'm just going to keep on going. Our sixth race the afternoon, uh, the fun part about the summer, spring, spring summer meeting at Gulfstream Park. Well, now summer meeting because today's the first day of summer. <laughs> is the two-year-old racing. And this one is four and a half furlongs. Made in special way, two-year-olds. We have a jockey change on the one. It's Eddie Castro. On the two, it's Jose Caraballo. Scratch the three, Abercorn, and there'll be a jockey to be named on the number 11 horse in here. And I went with the number two, 50s Music. You, uh, I went with the number two in here, 50s Music. That's got to be changed up there. I got two, nine, and one today. And let's start off with your number two in here, and that's 50s Music. Yeah, I had to put 50s Music on top. I originally had the three, Abercorn, on top. He scratched, but hey, there's another Stanley Gold two-year-old in here, so I'll just take that. Not, <laughs> not a bad trade-off there. This one is the son of Awesome, of course. Four published works to his credit. The most recent breeze I thought was a pretty sharp 47-3 and three move last weekend. 
He's a half sibling to the multiple stakes winning Hear Ye, Hear Ye. And Jose Caraballo is going to be aboard. He's won three of four starts for this barn. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had put 50s. I had to switch my selections around because when it scratched Abercorn, I definitely had to have Stanley Gold on top of the ticket. The horse I have in second is number nine, Mr. Kahlo. He's the son of Scat Daddy, debuting for trainer Dan Peter. He's getting Lasix. He's getting Ed, Ed Jockey Edgar Zayas named the ride. And I just think you watch the toad action on this horse to see how live he is. He also has been working strongly, and I really like how Scat Daddy is doing as a young sire, doing well with his debut runners, winning at a 14% clip. You know, I threw the number one on here, Applicate. He's the son of Henry the Navigator, breaking from the rail. He's got Eddie Castro. We mentioned that jockey today. Series of three furlong workouts, actually four of them over the track, uh, showing. And I just think this horse has been, you know, working steady. He's got those four three furlong works, a couple of those out of the gate. There's none that jump off the page at you. I like the change to job. I mean, I like the jockey had a cash throw to handle the inside post so maybe this horse at 15 to 1 can jump up and grab a share well it would certainly be a great value and with all of these two-year-olds or for the most part they haven't started so they're unproven and you see how they come out. I threw in the eight as well this is cold blood and he has the most extensive work pattern of the group Ten breezes on record, and I like that he was the only horse with a five furlong work. A couple of them actually, so he should be fit. Yeah, that, you like to see that, especially when they're going four and a half furlongs. He should be legged up for this debut. But uh, these two-year-olds, uh, one of the things I will tell you, mark down how they all run in these races because they're going to come back, and it's a great angle with a lot of first-time starters to see how they ran their first time out. They may not win, but they may show you something that you like, and you can use that for future reference. Let's go to race number seven today. One mile on the turf, maiden claim is three. Rolls and up twenty thousand dollars. Scratch the nine cruising forever. Scratch the main track only. Number eleven Grand Caballero out of here. And I went with the number four Ben Holiday. And you went with the two Philocites. I'll tell you about Ben Holiday. You can tell me about the two. This one now in the Ruben Monge's barn. It's the son of Harlan's Holiday. Stretches out to a mile. He returned from a five-month layoff to finish second. Beaten only a half length against twenty-five thousand dollar maidens going seven and a half furlongs. A new connections today to have Eddie Castro to ride. Been watching this barn. They're getting a lot of horses, for, uh, you know, and the first out, and they're running pretty good, so I put this one on top of my ticket. I really think that it's a toss-up between these two horses. We have our exacta flip-flop, and I could see it going either way. I put the two Felic TDs on top. This is a son of AP Warrior. He dueled on the lead and just tired late to be third, only beaten a length in his turf debut on May 15th for trainer Kathleen O'Connell. I like that barn as well. And it was his first time on the grass and his first time stretching out beyond six furlongs. I think he'll be better with that experience under his belt. But we also both use the five, and we seem to be in agreement that this one is third best today, and that's East Rock. Yeah, he's dropping to the $20,000 level, stretching out to this mile distance. He's going to wear blinkers. You look at the, the fractions he was pressing last time out, 21-2, and 44-1 and one before fading to finish fifth. That was against $35,000 maidens going five furlongs. I think he's going to be a major part part of the pace scenario this afternoon, stretching out after, you know, tracking fractions like that. This one's going to seem like a jiggy jog in the park early on in this race. And might be fitter in his second start back from the layoff. Have to respect everything from the Gustavo Delgado barn. Well, let's go to race number eight. And talking about Gustavo Delgado, he's got a horse I've been dying to see run back in here. And this is a one-mile allowance optional claimer. Three-year-olds and up $16,000. Scratch the one-party crash. The jockey on the three is Edgar Zayas. 118 pounds, scratch the four, native gold, and I'm talking about the number three horse in here, and that's a face of winner. Am I right uh, that this is your best bet of the day? This is my best bet of the day. I was very impressed with this horse. $150,000 son of street boss. He's going to face the winners today, stretching out to a mile. When he stretched out for a mile last time out, he won that race by almost 16 lengths, about 15 and a half lengths or something like that. Uh, Gustavo Delgado, he's really good winning back-to-back -back races. And to me, watching that last race, I think this is a good horse. It was such a dominant <laughs> performance, really. It was a breakthrough for that horse. Really stretching out, seemed to do him a world of good, and he's going to stay at that mile today. I don't think he's going to have an issue against winners if he runs anything like he did last time. I believe we both had the one-party crasher in second, who's not going to compete this afternoon. So uh, we're going to, I went with the number 10, Niche, in second. Stretching out after pressing the pace and weakening to finish fourth. That was against $16,000 optional claimers going seven furlongs last time out. Ch Trainer 
winner, Larry Pilati. He's winning races here right now at a 37% clip. He's got Pedro Carlo atop, the son of D. Wildcat, who won his previous race at this one-mile distance by 10 lengths. So I know he's a proven commodity at the distance. The barn is on fire. Thought I had to put this one on the ticket. I threw in the seven, Holy Highway. You have that one on the ticket as well. I, you probably scratched into yes. him with the scratch of Party Crasher. But I had him on the ticket from the beginning. A little bit of a hunch play with the barn. He's making his first start off the claim for trainer Peter Walder. Defeated $16,000 claimers on May 6th. I thought he's been working really well for the new connections. And he's well spotted today. Manny Aguilar is going to stay aboard. And I just saw the value at 8-1 to one and thought, let's put this horse in second. Well, that's exactly why I am. Into ticket, but you also have the number two horse on your ticket, Pass Key. And Pass Key, what a hard knocking performer. The reason I did not use this horse, never ran in a mile, tried seven furlongs last time out, backed up a little bit. I'm not convinced this horse wants to go a mile, but if you go and runs to some of his back numbers, oh boy. That's what I looked at. I went back and I just remember his three race win streak earlier this spring and it was so impressive. He's going to stretch out to a mile today. Like you mentioned, he did back up a little bit late, finished third, but was only beaten a length at this level on May 20th. And I thought maybe he could sit the trip in this race. Yeah, you know, if he bounces back to those performances that you were talking about during that win streak, he can win this race hands down. I, I did add the seven for the same reasons you did. Just the connections alone made me think that this horse, you know, turning back to uh, from a mile in the 16th to a mile. The barn does exceptionally well first off the claim. That is a holy high way. So our ninth and final race on this Father's Day card is a one-mile turf maiden claim at three-year-olds. The claiming level is $50,000 down to $40,000. The jockey on the two is Shannon Yuski. Scratch the seven, never in trouble. That's certainly not named for me. And the number nine horse in here is Luca Panici. will be riding 120 pounds and we want to go back and show you performance of the horse I have in third and you have right on top of your ticket and that is Starship Frontier. I thought this horse was pretty impressive last time out and very game. He dueled on the lead throughout the entirety of this race. He's going to press the pace there of the leader Smoke Police and those two are going to go on with it. No one's going to be making up any ground on these two. They're going to hook up at the top of the stretch and run their hearts out all the way to the wire. Smoke Police is going to get the edge here, but it's going to be a close margin, only a neck. And I thought that was a pretty game run from the horse that you're going to see in second, and that is Starship Frontier. We mentioned Peter Walder in the last race. He's going to be debuting for the Walder Barn today. You even see he kind of almost gets a little startled and drifts out a tiny bit in the stretch there. Could have been even closer, but... Peter Walder, 26% with new additions to his barn. I think if he doesn't get the win in the last race, he gets it here. Yeah, he's a son of a smoke black and a logical choice in here. But I did go with the number eight, who you have on your ticket, too. And is El Almirante. El Mirante. This one is a logical choice, I believe, to exit the maiden ranks. He responded to the class relief last time out with a second-place finish. He was beaten only a neck at this level and distance. So I'm jumping right back on that bandwagon and see if he can do it again. It was a heartbreaking loss last time out. I really thought he had it, and he just got caught. If he can run like that again, he absolutely has a shot in here. I also threw on the nine that's Seeking Daily. This is a son of Smart Strike, going to drop in for a tag for the first time today. Finished fifth in a Maven special weight in his career debut on May 22nd. The second place finisher in that race came back to break his maiden in his next start. So a little bit of a key race there. And trainer David Fox does very well. He's about 20% dropping horses from maiden special weight to maiden claimers. Yeah, Luca Panici, as we mentioned, riding that horse. Today. I had to go with the number three uh, crowd idol in second because if I'm on the uh, number eight horse of bandwagon, I have to have the three because this one is wheeling back today. Same level and distance as the closing. This horse was far back to make a five wide move to finish third behind aforementioned L. El Miriante last time out, so I just thought that this horse had to be on my ticket, but a bit of a wide open affair in the last race for our super high five. As usual, <laughs> another tough super high five race. We have one scratch, we're left with 10, but it's still a very competitive full field, and I could see it going a lot of ways. Well, here's what we got going this afternoon. We got the first day of summer, we got a fast main track, we got a fern tape turf course, we got the Rainbow Six, which starts in race number four with almost $255,000 in the pool and it's father's day what a day what a day it's going to be a good one best of luck to you and enjoy the day to all you dads out there